The Amazing Spider-Man, the film we've all been waiting for, it either got us super excited or pouting on the floor. I know some Raimi fanboys that weren't excited to see it, but I also know some folks that thought a reboot was needed. So you're probably wondering if I loved it or hated it. Well, it's not amazing, but it's decent. It's adequate. It was certainly a mix between a reboot and a remake. And I'll admit, a lot of the special effects looked pretty fake. So the story follows Peter Parker, played by Andrew Garfield. He lives with his Uncle Ben and Aunt May, played by Martin Sheen and Sally Field. Peter lost his parents when he was young, and now he's a nerdy outsider. But then one day at Oscorp, he gets bitten by a spider. While figuring out his new powers and learning about his parents, he comes across Dr. Kurt Connors, played by Rise Eifens. He eventually becomes a lizard, a villain I've been waiting to see. Not too over the top, the design was okay, but great to see on the big screen. Now let's look at the actors and how well they did. Oh, it's not the same without Tobey Maguire! Stop whining like a little kid! Andrew Garfield is the new Peter Parker, and he actually wasn't bad. He was awkward, he was nerdy, and can I also just add that Garfield didn't play him like a hipster, so just put a sock in it. Now let's move on to Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, and man, was she rocking it. Gwen was smart and funny and actually useful to the plot. She wasn't just some dumb broad to be captured a lot. The romance at times looked like an indie drama, which was kind of a bummer. But hey, what do you expect from the director of 500 Days of Summer? At least there was chemistry, even though it had cliches. Now let's move on to Sheen and Field as Ben and May. Two actors I've always loved and two roles to look up to. They were perfect for these roles and leave an impact they do. We then have Captain Stacy, played by the awesome Dennis Leary. He should have had more screen time. I'll try not to get too teary. Now, Ivan's Connors starts out kind of boring and slow, but they do make him more interesting in the film as they go. They build him up as the villain progressing slowly and not lazy. Then he becomes what we've been waiting for. A scientist that's crazy. The dialogue isn't particularly engaging or creative. But it's the story that pulls us in, even though it's a familiar narrative. Now, dark reboots have lately been one of Hollywood's most common trends. And this new Spider-Man film was expected to be a lot like Batman Begins. While it's not completely dark, it does take itself seriously. As a reboot for the Spider-Man franchise, it works okay for me. The ending does leave it open for a sequel. Of course it would. And I'll be waiting for that to happen as a new film series should. So was the film enjoyable? Sure. Was it amazing? No. Can it lead to better sequels and new on-screen villains? I think so. Like I said, it's a decent film and a fresh new start. I can't hate this film. I, I couldn't tear it apart. Now there's one more good thing about this film and I know you'll agree. It was definitely better than Spider-Man 3.